Well, ESPN continues its proud tradition of wokeness with a new documentary <laughs> called Skin in the Game. It talks about how wonderful sports is and why it's so racist. Are you retarded? Yes, because as we all know, million dollar contracts, yeah, that'll put you all back in chains. See, now that's some bullshit. I'm Jasper Gonzo, and this <laughs> is what's next. Happy, happy Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen. Jasper Gonzo, what's next? Your daily dose. Uh, feeling better. Um, almost there. Almost, but not quite. But um, I'm getting there. Um, yesterday I failed to post, and I do apologize for that. I just uploaded two videos this morning, so check them out. And um, I think you'll be very interested, especially with the topics currently at hand. But anyway, we're going to step away from the current affairs, and we're going to just jump into racisms. Yes, of course, it's been a while since I've jumped into that. But um, ESPN, yes, lovely ESPN, uh, the network that once actually talked about sports is now so full of shit regarding politics. Not a day goes by, not an hour goes by, not a host goes by without them talking about it and inserting their ignorance into said subject. So what does ESPN do? Well, ESPN creates a documentary. Yes, they create a documentary. Who, on who is it? Babe Ruth, Michael Jordan, Wayne Gretzky, Joe Montana, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, of course, being an Eagles fan. No, 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 no. We're not here to talk about sports. We're here to talk about racisms in sports and why million dollar contracts make you slaves. Yes. This coming out of Outkick. ESPN, Abram X, Kendi, documentary claims athletes are literally the new slaves. Sports contracts are the new slave chains. Yes. Lovely. Earlier this week, Outkick reported that ESPN quietly produced a series called Skin in the Game with noted race hustler Abram X. Kendi. We say it is quietly because they did not promote it as they usually do with anything else, especially when it comes to their products, that baseless cry of racisms. According to the ESPN press release, the series delves into the challenges of racism in the sports world and will reveal how pervasive racism is in sports while challenging the thoughts and systems of various governing bodies. You can read the entire piece here, of course, in another article. But if you're interested, like Eva Max Kendi's credentials, why I believe ESPN tries to keep the series mainly under wraps. One quick note, though. Kendi, though I before I continue, there are conflicting reports on whether his birth name was Abram Henry Rogers or simply Henry Rogers. Either way, he changed his name to Abram X uh, Rogers and then married an actual doctor whose last name was Kendi and took her name. Feel free to do that what you will. Me? Yeah. Soy boy pussy. Anyway, um, because I care deeply about the outkick, I watched the show because so you don't have to and frankly i didn't either but at least i got paid to do it so to, uh, to be fair not nearly enough without further ado here are the highlights episode one the show opens with amber max and uh candy sitting on a chair wearing a shirt that reads the 1619 project of course it refers to a new york times project that aims to reframe and revise and reboot American history. Essentially, the idea is that American can never atone for slavery, and that slavery was a core tenet in the creation of the nation, and thus for its existence, and perpetually, and perpetually, excuse me, inherently racist land. Well, the fact of the matter is, it's been debunked a thousand times over. More so that even the founder got fired from a university job. Yeah. And now we're all to a flying start. First episode title, Power to the Players, refers to the players using sports to fight social justice. Side note, what well, exactly social justice is, it's a great term, but it has no real meaning. No one who claims for it, fight for it, can actually define it. It's not tangible. You can't actually hold it in your hands. It's just like defining a woman, I suppose. Three minutes in, we get a first look at Colin Kaepernick. Yes, the man who took a knee, national anthem, and that basically put his career over. I'm shocked that it took so long, quite honestly. Five minutes in, I already lost count of the platitudes. 
So many phrases that sound profound but offer zero substance. Things like use their platform, fight for change, speak up, athletic activism, social injustice, systematic racisms. But still, not one actual piece of evidence of what change or fight we're even talking about. Next, they do actually dive into specific situations. Colin Hill, the former Mississippi State running back, discusses his role in getting a Confederate flag removed from the Mississippi State Capitol. Yes, because it was so offensive to him, it actually prevented him from actually getting a career. An admirable cause, to be sure, but it's difficult to reconcile the, uh, reconcile the idea that a flag is the biggest problem facing black Americans in Mississippi. It is, then great. That means there aren't any more pressing issues. That's a good sign, not an ominous one. Yes, because unemployment, no, that flag has to go. Next, Kennedy welcomes an acclaimed journalist and author, Howard Bryant. He did not mention Bryant's past history of violence. That's interesting, since the show uses a LeBron clip earlier in the vignette, asking people to, quote, end the violence. Oh, the irony. Bryant drops his shem. You pay a price for being black in America. There is no question about it. It's an interesting comment, given a source. Remember that Brian was arrested for allegedly choking his wife in public and then assaulting the police officer who arrived on a scene to protect his wife. Yeah, it's not alleged. He did it. It's on body cam. Brian initially claimed that his arrest was racially motivated because there, of course, he did, uh, before later apologizing for the claim. He served no jail time and accepted probation to avoid any criminal charges. Choked his wife, but yet got a slap on the wrist. Yeah, yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah, people like Kendi invited him to the show to talk about racisms. They call him an acclaimed journalist. Sure, it seems that Brian did pay a price for his actual crimes, let alone the one he claims without evidence. And there he is right there. Is he lovely? <clears throat> they, along with Olympia and Gwendolyn Barry, continued discussion on activism, uh, athlete activism. As with the majority of the episode, they consistently refer to acts upon athletes in the 1960s who actually did stand up against racist policies in America. No one's arguing that black citizens in the United States in this early, mid-90s uh, faced racism the way they backed the policy. The question is, the policies that are in place now, what are the changes that athletes are fighting for? Other than the argument about police brutality. Uh, of course, uh, that's questionable. Some circumstances are warranted. Others, not really which is not statistically backed by any mainly uh, narrative-driven. No one ever answers a critical question ESPN, Abram Kendi, and his guest on Skin of the Game certainly don't either because they don't have any answers. It's just about accusations. But then comes the biggest bombshell of the entire episode is delivered by Barry. Barry gained attention while she raised her fist during the American National Anthem after winning gold in the 19 Pan Am Games. Of course, then went on to the Olympics and failed to medal. That uh, she did not represent those who died due to systematic racisms. She did not give the example of people dying from systematic racisms. In the conversation with Kenny and Brian, Barry claimed that athletic contracts are the new slave chains. And, of course, here they are. I'm not a historian. Of course not. But I don't believe the slave chains came without multi-million dollar deals, fame, public status. I don't believe that slaves had a choice of whether or not to accept these chains. Whereas athletes don't have to sign multi-million dollar contracts. Yes, they don't. But they do. Because they're million dollar contracts. Hello? I could be wrong. Someone can correct me if I'm mistaken. Athletes are literally the new slaves, she continues, because we need this. Our families, our friends depend on this contract to eat. Some, some no. Barry clearly doesn't understand what the word literally, literally means. And while she makes these absurd comparisons, Brian happily nods along and Kennedy uh, punctuates her point with a sigh and simple, yep. Ryan Reynolds. It's almost like the contract is new slave chains. Athletes are literally the new slaves. And of course, that has been taken down because of copyright. Gee, I wonder what it was. Professional athletes are akin to slaves, according to Ibram X, Kendi, and ESPN. Okay, there's a lot of digest here. The lie to digest here, excuse me. Excuse the pun. First, athletes are not required to sign contracts or play sports at all. That's how America works. They are free to choose other lines of work that don't require signing contracts. Second, almost all Americans feed their families, even uh, though probably not their friends or normal jobs. The option is readily available. However, most normal jobs don't come with six or seven eight-figure signing bonuses. I suspect professional athletes choose this profession based on income potential. Again, the word, key word is choose. 
Third, she complains that athletes break the contract. They lose their money. Yes, that's how contracts work. So usually when you break it, that means, uh, yeah, the owner doesn't have to pay you. Uh, even the ones that non-black people sign. Yes, non-black people do sign contracts as well. Speaking of which, non-black athletes also sign contracts to play professional sports. So even if her point were true, which it's not, how are contracts racist? Remember, they just are. This is the problem with uh, people attempting to rewrite history. The 1619 Project seeks to cl uh, make claims, um, I'm sorry, seeks to make everything about slavery. Thus, people who buy this narrative see it everywhere. There's no comparison between slavery and pro professional athletes, full stop. But activists need something to fight against. That something doesn't exist, they create it. Later, Barry goes on to say that athletes have so much political power, it's ridiculous. Well, that sure flies in the face of her slavery point. Again, I'm not a historian, but I don't think slaves sat around thinking about their political power. There you have it. That's episode one. We've checked all the major boxes on racisms. This is the first time that I'm doing this. So this is going to be an ongoing series. Um, my thoughts initially. To say that contracts are the new slave chains. That professional owners of teams are the new slave owners. Of course, it's all bullshit, bullshit, and... Um, <clears throat> Let me emphasize more bullshit. The article makes a very salient point is that no one is forcing you. No one has a gun to your head to sign a $20 million signing bonus on a hundred plus million dollar contract. No one. You have some of the richest athletes in sports are black. Some of the biggest signing bonuses were signed by black athletes. The most prominent roles regarding those sports, like quarterback, you know, whether it's NBA, LeBron James, or what have you, sign some of the biggest contracts. They're not forced to sign it. No one's telling you to sign it. You can go work at McDonald's. But who would work at McDonald's when someone's throwing 50, 60, 70, 80, 100, 150, 200 million dollar contracts in your face? You know what? I like to flip burgers. So the hell with being a starting quarterback for an NFL team, you know, because signing these contracts, you just might be racist. Ugh. And with that being said, I'm Jazz Borgonzo. This is what's next. Want to see more like this? Please have a comment below. Like it, share it, subscribe to it, hit that notification bell. So you guys never miss a thing and we'll see you next time. Peace.